Hi everyone, welcome to another Learn, Grow, Invest video. Today we have another IPO for you. We're gonna be reviewing the Edifocal Limited initial public offering. So we're gonna do a full IPO and prospectus review. So let us just get right into it. All right, so if it's your first time here, we are going to go through the prospectus step by step, go through as much of the areas as we can cover within an hour. So we do have some, some key areas that we normally like to focus on, and we think those areas will, will give you a good understanding of what the, the overall offer is about. Then, you know, we're going to you know, just talk about it for a little bit, what things we are, we're expecting to come up, what things we like, what things maybe we have some concerns about, all within the framework of giving you an objective review. And so, yeah, uh, we are a Bible-based investment community focused on financial education and literacy. So I'm going to open with a brief word of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the ability to produce wealth. We pray, Lord, that you'll give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be able to make wise investment decisions. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. So before I get started, I want to invite you to join our Telegram group. We have a very active and engaging group. Uh, our users have been saying that they're learning a lot. And so I really do encourage you to join us. The link would be in the description for this video from whatever platform that you're watching this video on. All right. Hey, Orville. All right. So I'm also joined today by um, David Rose as well. David, you ready to go? I'm All right. So David, go, man. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> While you were right, speaking, no I was already saying for the school from AJ a while ago. So you can't Okay. 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 Start. All right. Cool. Sounds good. All right. So um, let's go. So before we, we, we start to, to dissect things here, I'd like to say that everything that we discuss here is for discussion, entertainment, education, and illustrative purposes only, and should not be construed as professional financial advice, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell Edifocal Limited. We are not licensed financial advisors, so before you make a decision, please speak to one. All right, so these are the six areas that we like to focus on. And I think, as I said, this kind of gives you a good overview of the offer. So we're going to talk about the company for a little bit. They have two main segments, the learn and business segments. So we're going to speak about them. We're going to speak about what's in the offer, right? So what, what are they offering? We're going to look at just an overview, you know, some of the charts that they had in their financials. Talk about the dividend policy, then we're going to go through the MDNA and the financials that like go through their, their projections for 2022 and 2023. We're going to look at their nine month statements for 2021. David and I are going to talk about it, say what things we see from, from the numbers that were shown. And we're going to talk about at the end how to apply for it, um, what the likely allocation will be, similar to what we did for Spur Tree and, and JFP. So just look out for that as well near the end. All right. Sorry about that. I had to just make sure that the audio wasn't the other devices around me at the phones weren't going off, you know, just make sure it went silent. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's cool. That's cool. All right. So um, so there are two main arms to Eddie Focal. Most persons would likely know the learn side. That's their primary area of business. Um and recently, I believe, David, was it 2020 that they launched the business arm or was that 2021? It's more like 2020, uh, uh, but at the same time, it's yeah, more like the, 2020, the prospectus will, will verify when, when exactly, but just understand there are two key areas. The learn is focused on students. No, 2020. See, I just, I just checked the right Yep. Yeah. So the learn is focused on students providing um, it's it's considered um, business to consumer. The learn is focused on businesses, um, and so that's one of the, the areas that they're they're expecting to build out over the next couple of years. We'll look at one of the articles that references um, an engagement with BCIC, 
and other things to, to, to that effect. So just to, to, to understand those key areas about the company. All right, so in terms of the offer, the date on the prospectus is February 17th. The opening date is March 3rd. Now we understand that you do have the ability to apply before the opening date and it's recommended that you do. They did mention in the prospectus that it's on a first come first serve basis. That's one of the things I did note. The closing date is March 17th, uh, but understand that at any point that the offer, they, they've met their quota in terms of the amount that they're trying to raise, the IPO can close, right? Once it's closed, you should receive your, your basis of, of allotment within six days after the closing date. Any refunds will be within 10 days after the closing date. And it's in terms of what it says in the prospectus, it should be listed within 21 days of the closing date. Uh, so worst case, um, I guess, you know, 21 days after the 17th, but if it should close early, which I think some persons are anticipating, then you can just expect it to list within the month of March. I think that's that's a safe thing to say. All right, anything else to add to that, David? Uh, to be honest, uh, not really. Uh, okay. First, you should remember that, you know, uh, Wednesday is a holiday, which is why, you know, you're seeing this extra day because, you know, it's usually one week, but because Wednesday is a holiday, that's where you get extra day. So my persons were saying, you know, this happened in the past. Well, with a holiday, you have an extra day to apply if you so choose. Yes, correct, correct. All right, let's keep it moving. Okay, so in terms of their share capital, um, in terms of the structure of the company over the last couple of years, now in 2010, when they just started, they had 3,000 shares. Um, that would be a part of the makeup of the company. In 2020, they, they expanded that to 18,373 shares. And as at January 1st, 2021, they would have changed that to unlimited. So that pretty much means is that there's no cap as to the number of shares that they can issue. And I gather that this is just positioning them for, for future growth, all right? We'll talk about the overall shares they have outstanding, which I believe is about 683 million if I'm not mistaken. So what's on offer to the public is about 12, about 12% 12 of the shares? Correct, 7% yeah. reserve. So and that 12% is basically 80.5 million shares. Yeah, all right. So we, we'll, we'll look at that in the, in the prospectus, but at a, at a higher level, just for your understanding. So in terms of the shares being offered now, um, we have their key partners, being um having access to 35 million nine hundred and forty seven thousand shares lenders option i think this is specifically is this is it specifically to roots financial not necessarily alone at, I'll, uh, I'll check the prospectors at yeah 10, it's actually roots. it's like specific yes, to roots. Yes. so they are they, they are converting that to shares here right basically a spirit tree 2.0 if you get what i'm saying because <laughs> that's what uh spirit tree with gk investments yeah yeah so 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 that's that's the lenders option and the public uh that's the rest of us we would have access to eighty million four hundred and ninety nine thousand. so the overall this 129 million rounded to 130 is what would represent as we said about 12 12 percent of the company no 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 no, no, no. remember the non zero the public pool is the 12 percent amount all of this would represent 20 percent Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Yes, and we when when we get to the breakdown, we'll they'll they'll show those percentages as well. Uh, so shouldn't, shouldn't we break down the 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 setup right now in terms of who is what in what? You wanna do it now? All right, Kip, you wanna share your screen? No, uh, I want to share the prospectus like that. You know, it is it not necessarily to that benefit, but kind of speak from the definitions of the prospectus, which is better. So, you know, when they not so basically. If you're not in the reserve that. pool, you're in the non-reserve pool, which is basically the public. Uh, but if you're a key strategic partner, it says that you are a person that Eddie Focal currently collaborates with or will collaborate with in the future. It is likely to have an important role in Eddie Focal's future success, namely Eddie Focal employees, Eddie Focal contractors, lead broker, maybe investments limited, 
and a person who insert is or will be in the future a key collaborator or provider of a critical service to any focal. And as uh, Jeremy mentioned earlier, the lender in this case is Root Financial Group Limited, which you know lent out uh, a th 13 or well, actually, by the a specific second, but Root Financial lent out some money to uh, Eddie Focal, which is why they're able to convert in this case to equity. Yeah, and, and it's, it's part and of the that, and, and that it represents. It, it represents a portion of, of the overall debt, if, 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 if I remember correctly, but we'll get to those specifics very soon. So, so this is... So it's $50 million being, uh, that was lent to Eddie yeah. Focal, and, uh, you know, the, it, it's not, all this has been converted to be specific in this case. So only $13.24 million is actually being converted to equity. The rest of the receiver also as a liability in terms of a debt. Yes, so correct. Just some context. Correct. Yeah, and and I think we should say that in the the, the use of proceeds section broken. Not the use of proceeds, but material indebtedness section. You know. Okay. All right. All right. So you said you wanted to look at the overall shares now, or when we when we do the prospect. Well, we can, we can, we can start there from after I share capital. You know, so persons are you know understand understand what's happening. You know, in terms of what's going on. So from the page thirty three right there. Right here? No, page 33. Uh, yeah. What? You're going to page 36 a while ago. <laughs> um, yeah, right there. Okay. So, that's, that's, that's clean, you know, you can't see clearly. I was going to say you didn't have to go into much further, but, uh, so, I was going to mention that, you know, the three, the initial amount of units right here, as you can see, but I mean, 2,000 units, 2,000 units, and you know, that's really just because you want to get a company registered. So if you actually talk, present actually attack companies that have, have company, quote unquote, you know, change their share structure over the years, yeah, uh, you know, or you say, where they're starting from, it's really that at least one amount of shares they started with initially is really just because you know they that was the amount to register the company. So yeah, so I mean, this 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 I, I like the the fact that we see this history. Um, and just understand it was just a part of the process of positioning them for where they are now. So I, it really does a good breakdown, I think, of showing the different stages which which it occurred and so on. But I don't think for the purposes of the review, we need to, to focus on that really. No, the part that I probably want to highlight here is just know the structure that will be after, which I think is here. Um, That's right there, yeah. So I wanted to show here right this is it yeah yeah so in terms of there's a section where it shows the percentages actually let me let's see if i can find that no you you, you already signed it a while ago it's right there to the left that's the that's the quote ah. unquote current makeup at the moment okay okay yes yes so 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 this would be the current makeup and then afterwards, this would be so all all the existing shareholders that were just shown on the left would make up eighty percent, and the non-reserved and the reserved would would make up their remaining twenty. 20. So yes. what um, David was saying is that twelve point four percent is what's being made available to the public. All right, and then you see the breakdown here. So there are shares outstanding. At the point of listing would be six hundred and forty-eight million, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I think we can go back to the presentation now. So let me minimize that for now. All right. So let's move on from here. So in terms of use of proceeds, um, it mentions that the 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 proceeds from the transaction will be used to repay short-term loans and invest in product development and for expansion. So we'll talk about that a little bit later um, in terms of the areas that were highlighted. Transaction costs are, are about 12 million. Short-term debt would be 42 million. And expansion to new markets would be 62 million. So that's how they're planning to use the money that they're going to be receiving. Mm. Right. I'm actually going to say that we probably should have gone through the material indebtedness because we have at least uh, given some context. Right. We can, we can no, no, you right, you, you you right because... That's page, that's page 37 for context. What you said, we should the next page basically. 
But the reason I was like highlighting that keenly was because if you look at the maturity on the Roots Financial Group uh, debt, as you can realize, you notice that it's a term loan. And yeah. So, so I just tell us right there, 30 million will come equity. And more than likely, the part of the process, the IPO, as mentioned, will become uh, equity. Uh, equity, sorry, be repaid to Roots Financial like that. Yeah. So like, you know, at least you know where the part of the loan is already going to be covered. And the thing is, I probably can cover this NCD loan as well, which is $801,000. Yeah. So it's far too many dollars want to cover approximately debt. So uh, don't look at the balance sheet or, you know, the, the, the poor quotes and audited accounts after, but we know as you know, 37 million is basically in roots financial alone. I put the hundred eight hundred thousand is from NC, it's, it's, it's NCBB. So it's actually yeah. like $4 million worth of short term loans to be repaid as well. So at least yeah, as, a bit as, of, as I noticed the dates for these two, this is March, 2022, and this is June. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so these are probably two areas of focus and 13 million out of this would be converted to shares. Um, yes. So yeah, so yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add here, David? I was just gonna say that I have to say a big up to God's parents. <laughs> okay, okay. I know what you mean. We'll get there, though. We'll get there. I didn't say anything, you know. I just a big up to the parents. Yeah, we'll get. <laughs> if you're the details, you see what I said. Big up to the parents. Yeah, man. All right. So in terms of some of the highlights, um, let me actually stop sharing for a sec, so I can bring, the, so I can read the notes while we're going through the next few slides. Um, let me go back here. All right. So in terms of their their expenses, now at a high level, this is this is what um would have seen. So so they gave us five years financials, which is which is good to see. Um, so what we saw in terms of admin expenses, these naturally grow with revenues. So this is the, the makeup of them. For the last five uh, years. Uh, Jermaine, yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> next time I put the dollar sign and the zeros. Or is that from the prospectus actually? Oh, oh okay. That, I was wondering because it, it presents it, it's kind of misalluding to probably the readers. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I mean I mean, I, I, I yeah, should yeah, 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 the screenshot it. is directly from, from no, the No, I just realized I just realized where you see where I pointed it out though. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. I do. All right, so in terms of, let me just read some of the commentary on it. Um, let me locate that there. So we do see the questions in the chat. Keep them coming. We'll try to, to take them near the end, all right? And we can take them as we go along still, you know, because it's when it wouldn't be too complicated. Okay. Uh, and so, no, we're not answering right now, you know, I just saying as we go mm-hmm. along. Yeah, man. All right, cool. All right. So, so you want us to just go through the the prospectus financials now and just go through the outlook? Because I'd really just share these to go through them at a high level. Because what what I'm anticipating is that for those persons watching this for the first time, if we jump straight to the the prospectus, they may not be able to follow everything that we're doing. So showing yeah, these at a high yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. All right. So, so, so I was, this. I was, I was actually going to say that you know. You can just highlight to me what kind of question uh, no, since it comes across to the analysis. Okay. Is it is it a question? Yeah, man, yeah, man. Let me let me bring it up. All right. So it's so so Tremaine from LinkedIn is asking, how does the repaying of short term loans affect the analysis? Um in in in, in what respect? affect what or or our analysis that we're going through now or the analysis of, of how you'd look at at the company overall that I was, what I was going to point out was that uh, uh, the company company repaying loans you know fees the balance sheet significantly but at the same time it's a bit of appreciation of the fact that you know the company would have potentially you know had plans and you know needed some interim financing because as you realize so the tenure of those loans that were mentioned earlier 
registering a terminal to, to which basically means Harry was bridge financing. Uh, so he, I mean, he actually speaking with, I believe, after. So when it comes down to the latter in terms of after the company's uh, letter repaid in that, in that respect, it was significant to the balance sheet. So as at the uh, end of September, ADO Four call had uh, yeah, second. All right. ADO call had uh, give me a second. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, I, I I might have to pause <laughs> for a second as well. So it is about uh, 23 plus 63, about $86 million in, sorry, you have $63 million, $63 million in total short terminals at the moment. So to pay a $42 million is basically reducing that to just $21 million. And, you know, at the same time, the company can always uh, uh, readjust those loans into another, or, 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 or as you say, I just everything is a bit term is refinancing in terms of you know consolidate all those loans into this one F F I or you know to another lending partner. So that's another good consideration of you know company paying on its debt. Okay, it frees up the kind of thing you have to remember. Once you have debt on your books, which is short-term debt, it takes up more of your immediate resources. Uh, so today for receivables, it goes exactly. to the payables exactly. and so forth. So the kind of loan is coming those are coming off of the books now, you know. It really is the analysis of the company because at least the company under any scenario wouldn't we're analyzing it wouldn't be in a quote unquote significant stress. All oh right. I forgot it's actually, it's actually even more in terms of charge and being paid off. Because I forgot that uh, roots uh, would get reconverted converting some of the debt, you know. So yeah. So I'm I'm sorry there, I got I got a little distracted. I had to take care of something offline there. Does that answer the question, though, Tremaine, based on what David had, had responded? So, I mean, what, what I would add to that is that I did note that based on how, how they had to, to operate over the, the last few years, and it shows it in, in the prospectus, just the number of short-term loans or loans that had to be taken out to just finance operations. Um, so, I mean, raising, using equity now to clear off some of those obligations would be would would definitely lower their their interest payments in the short term and help them with just having as it says here capital for for expansion all right so hopefully that answers the question um jay simpson is asking how how feasible is the expansion to 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 north america it's, I mean, very, it's very feasible it's, like, it's the market itself speaks volumes jamaica is just three million people uh quote unquote supposed to be in the country why are you talking about just US selling over 300 million persons? So, and if you're selling to kids, it's a, a still a very sig large market. Yeah, so the, the idea behind it with, with so, so Eddie Focal is both um, a tech company and an education company. So they've kind of built their model to scale, right? So, so, so they have a platform they've been working on for the past 10 years. I know they see an opportunity to add other services to it. So they I mean they're they're able, I mean that at least from from what I see, they're able to offer primarily to to PEP students, for example, but it it's not limited to that, right? Based on their model of of education and gamification, that can have other applications to other industries. So I'm guessing they're starting with 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 those territories based on where they've maybe built some relationships and where they see you know the best opportunity to grow so I, wanna, in terms I, of the, I was going to point out something as well in the sense that Duolingo can I set the tone already for those who don't know uh, so Duolingo is a language education learning platform and in the case of Duolingo their business model initially was you know uh, to uh, be, in the quote and single sense be gamified and you know, it was technically quote unquote free for the most part and they, they finally commercialized it and you know it's a little, little company on the i believe it's nasdaq i'll check it out to come but i just an example of you know the opportunity to align the market and it's uh listed on the nasdaq yeah yeah so i mean that that so based on the type of business model that they have to scale 
the company that they have once once they've kind of made their way into a market you're really just kind of shoring up the 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 infrastructure in terms of the 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 platform to be able to provide those services no it's just i mean i'm not sure because from from my initial read i didn't see much in the prospectus that spoke to their actual strategy once they to go into the market so hopefully that's something that will be shared over time but just thinking of what we know of them so far and how they'd be able to to potentially do that um, and i'd like to just further add in the sense that you know the company went to those markets you know uh when it comes into the into the software you have to remember that you know they have their own intake uh, con uh, content to an extent and you know you also need to remember that uh, when it comes to education of that nature look at abc mouse or those other platforms it's good to a specific market and the thing is uh based on the nature of the market any focus doesn't need a large amount of uh, as you would say a scale okay, and you're going to go for scale eventually to really bring in the, the big box the real thing about this is you know, just ensuring that they follow uh, you know the compliance regulations in those markets compared to jamaica which is you know a lot less uh, strict because in the u.s they have copa and other regulations you know to protect children so once they you know navigate that those that market carefully and appropriately they're in a pretty good place yeah yeah so i mean the wonderful thing about their their business model is the ability to scale, right? So once once those one well, we'll talk about that some more later. I want to to go through. All right. So I think we've taken um most of the, the questions that we had before. Let yeah, us but, uh, but to go through the highlights and then we'll take questions in the QA section. All right. Yeah, but yeah, so I said because of the questions because mm -hmm. at least we got a chance to, you know, sit down and actually appreciate what was being discussed. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man, agreed, agreed. All right, so, um, yeah, so we, we, we're we just showing these at a high level now, as I said, we'll go through through the financials and the forecast for for 2022 and 23. All right, so these this is an overview of their admin and operating expenses. Um, uh, can you, since the, since this, the, the way it was presented, you know, can just state the figures to bring context to the the person's watching yeah all right so what i had here pretty much and i have this you know what i could do it this way as well so um that works too yeah <laughs> i just i just remembered that that i had this i had done all of put everything here all right so i want to just maximize that all right, so let's go straight to, yeah, what we're looking at is admin expenses. So, I mean, um, in terms of of revenue, they had their largest, um, well, I mean, the pandemic provided a great opportunity for them to grow. So we had them doing revenues of, you know, 9 million in, in 2018, then 26, then 102. I mean, I know that's that's a noticeable jump for for everybody who read it, and so naturally you'd have seen that 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 seventy four million that we just showed in the chart would be this this increase in admin expenses, but it's something that you expect as your revenue grows, then your admin expenses are gonna grow. Now, I believe the makeup of this primarily would be their their model works through through consultants, persons who prepare content, etc. So I'm guessing that as they as they need to prepare content for the different courses, you know, those those persons will need to be paid if, if they're working on a new product uh, for the market, they'll they need to work through those those consultants. Now we don't know a breakdown of this cost really. So I think there's a salary breakdown and a content creator breakdown. I saw um, everything else would, would really be rolled up into that. Um, so, so that if you go and you just look and make sure so yeah check it uh, for me David. it yeah it it is combined in essence when you look at it in audited financials so what page page 99 99 
Yes, sir. All right. One second. Okay. All right. Here we go. See, I'm trying not to do this kind of jumping between the two, but I mean, context is important. Yeah, that is why I said that, you know, yeah. it's best Let's to look, look at the breakdown. and see what is there. Yeah. So um, out of that 74 million, 36 would be staff costs. And I'm just going through the major expenses, right? And then you have content labor. I'm not sure what 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 specifically di um, distinguishes content labor um and how that would be different from staff so i don't know if this is staff as in everybody on on the edifocal team and this content labor would be you know everybody outside of the company i don't know if it speaks to that specifically and so yeah then, that's, that's something to, to highlight in the sense that you know it was something that we were able to from a high level understand uh probably it's probably in the notes uh but you know, content labor, those other high level expenses, you know, probably. Yeah, should come yeah. So, so, so if anybody read this now, I mean, the, the prospectus came out two days ago. So we, we weren't able to comb through everything. But um, just in case somebody read the notes and saw that, can you share it in the chat? Um, other high level fees, well, bad debt. I know that stood out to me that 5 million bad debt. Um, but what the thing is, on, what we're going to say yeah. was, I'm wondering if it's based on how, how uh, basically, I should think of, you know, if it was based on how IFRS was done or so on, because okay. like, it should be able to see what was discussed right there. And you see where I okay. had to that particular area. All right. And check that in a sec. Apart from that, professional fees are there, membership fees. Those would um, those are the major things that that contribute to the seventy four million that they had in twenty twenty. All right. So you said, um, let's see if we can find that cost. It it does break down the thirty six million here a little bit. So wages and salaries thirty three, staff welfare, and then contract labor. Um, so the trade. So the so the actual. Uh, trade receivables, uh, it's on the note eight. Note eight, yes, sir. Okay, here we go. So, we're not seeing the uh, quote unquote breakdown of the, or the note of the bad debt, but at least you know, we can at least see what's going on right there in terms of. Uh, where the provisioning would have come from potentially. And the kind of thing is when you have bad debt, you just take it out of your I out of your receivables model or you know your your credit less provisioning. I mean that that's that's one of the areas that I believe was growing as well. Receivables. So receivables at the at the um nine month for 2021 was 77 million. Um, for 2020, that was 33. So I don't know how they're going to end the year. I don't know how much they're going to collect here. I did say I know that they they were mentioning they'll they're trying aggressively to collect their their receivables within 60 days. Um, so the 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 2021 report, if if they're able to to if if the plan is to try and collect within 60 days, then the the Final report for 2021 will be 90 days or but three months. But the thing is, if you go out any focus on about the receivables, they also mention the fact that you know it's really arising from you know particular companies in SRP or clients. So did it, so yeah, did, it say, did it say it's, specifically what time, which page? Let me, okay, so it's page 53, and it says generally speaking. Or large receivables are usually attributed to one or two of our key partners. Occasions is a private sector partner, but generally it's the government of Jamaica. For the nine months oh, okay. ending September 30, 2021, almost 70 receivables are attributed to one key partner. that have been carrying the receivables with us for the same three months. Okay, okay. So, 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 so the thing is, although you say receivable right there, it wouldn't necessarily be 
a spread out among its clients like that in a sense, you know. Mm-hmm. It's more likely from the as I would say, the one the one party. Uh because I have a friend who you know says who actually sponsored a kid to go to Eddie and Eddie Focal, you know. Okay. No, so that, that's it the string that you know, when you see the receivers and preprints right there. Uh, it's I, I I just like that you know it's pro, pro, a committed fund from you know one of those key partners as they mentioned and just the fact that uh, they, they pay but you know how pay was yeah man yeah man yeah man so I mean I I bad debt is just something that I mean we only saw it once so it's not like there's a like you know yeah, years of, yeah so I mean a one off showing of something is not really a cause for concern it stood out to me because of the makeup of of the admin expenses overall, but it's, I, I wouldn't say it's cause for concern, but and I still is, want to look at that number for, for 2021 is, to see. And the thing is that for context, it. that bad debt can be reversed. Yes, yes. So, can you, and you should mention that is because first thing to be like this, that, no, so, all right, so context, it's in my people, bad debt doesn't mean that it's totally gone, it can be repaid. If you just put a vision on a court for a bad debt because you don't want to catch that anymore on your books as a receivable. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And I, I think about the content because if the person is actually honest and appreciate what's going on. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. All right, cool. So I'll just let's just go through go through the financials this way <laughs> and not through the through the PowerPoint so that it'd be easier to to go through. And we can just take it from from balance. Well, these persons, are these per- persons were able to see what was going on in essence, you know, from a yeah. very yeah. simplified view versus the perspective, which is kind of cramped, you know, it's in the way it was organized in a sense. Yeah. All right. Um, Deborah, what 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 are you saying is funny? Tell me. I'll I'll wait to see his comment here. All right. So what we have here, let me explain what you're looking at. This is a nine months. Now, I didn't get to load all of these. So when I scroll down, you'll see I, I didn't get to load all of the liabilities. Um, my focus for seeing for the, the 2021 financials was really to understand um, the income statement. That was my priority. So I did that first. And then I was working my way down here. But again, I ran out of time there. So we can focus on the five year. And we have income and cash flow statements as well that we can speak to so we'll just do 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 the financial overview now and then we'll go back to talking about their dividend policy the highlights from the mdna etc all right so mm-hmm. in terms of the makeup of their balance sheet this this is what you're seeing here from 2016 all the way to the nine months for 2021 um in terms of asset base growing um three million in 2016 to 70 million now, mostly made up of intangible asset. I mean, naturally being a software company, that's 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 not surprising there. So that would be a large portion of their makeup. So, you know, the code platform, you know, things that you can't touch and feel um, that persons may not be be traditionally used to for 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 another type of company. But you're gonna see that for for companies of this nature um that's that that's a major contributor there we spoke about receivables before um you know due due from director would be 26 million and cash which is something that we, we definitely want to look for would be 8 million so it's good to see them building up cash here because over the over the last five years that would have been the concern in terms of how, how much cash they have which you know would I guess would speak to the, the the amount of times they've had to take on loans to get you know cash for for various things that they would have to do so the more cash they have the less short-term borrowing they'll need to do so that's something that that is good to see them building up cash in terms of liabilities um coming all the way from 2016 to now that's what we're seeing here um these are the long-term loans well long-term loans and uh, we're looking at growth in terms of accounts payable i mean to me that's when you when you look at 
receivables to payables that that's actually not not a bad um comparison i think that's still oh <laughs> what's up, buddy? Something else <laughs> we were talking about that in the group earlier what was there anything there so taxation payable here is 2.6 million for 2020 and short term loans here that's that's what you're seeing here for the last 3 years so this is really um their their balance sheet in terms of um retained earnings you're not going to see anything there that is something that you know you'd want to see as it relates to dividends, right? Because they, they mentioned their dividend policy. So so the anticipation, and I was hoping to finish the 2021 to see what, what that would look like. And we'll look at their projections as well to see, you know, for, for those interested in dividends or how soon they'd be able to pay a dividend, et cetera. Um, that's, that, that's a place that you want to look. So it's not like when we did the review for, Trans Jamaica, for example, where we said the dividend would would not be coming from only net profits. I believe their dividend policies state specifically that it would be coming from profits. All right. Um, anything you want to say about the balance sheet, David, before I move on? Yeah, well, I'm just going to point out that, you know, uh, the company would have been achieving a greater scale during COVID. So, you know, they, they, you, really see, you really see the difference come out in the last three years, Yeah, and, you know. Eddie Focal being what they were was technically the best position player. And you know, as we even get when we get to, when we get the chance to actually go to average revenue per user, that's really you know yeah. pretty, yes. pretty interesting. <laughs> I, I definitely want to get there as well. So we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So um the time that we're gonna the place that we're gonna spend the most time on is is the income statement. And this is something that you definitely want to to look at for a company like this. So 2016, 6.7 million. Um, 2018, 9 million. 2019, 26 million. So that's what? That's almost 200% growth um, in terms of revenue between those two years. And this was before the pandemic. So that's, a, that's a, an extremely good sign. And then, as David just mentioned, they were well positioned for the pandemic, which would have provided these opportunities here. I believe as much as 60,000 students over a three month period. When 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 we look at that average revenue per user, we'll see, you know, a little bit more about this, right? So for nine months in 2021, they would have exceeded revenues for for 2020, for 2020 which is definitely a good sign. Um, and one of the questions that I had looking at their projections, right? So we saw we saw this growth from here to here. Then we saw this growth from from 19 to 20. What I was concerned was was the was the projection for 2022, right? Because let's say they end their year at 130 or 140 million, their 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 projection for 2022 is 322 million in revenue. So that I, I would love to understand a little bit more about what would have gone into that projection. No, we do understand that there's a business side. We, we, we see opportunities like that of with, with BCIC, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would like to see personally what's the makeup of that 322. Where, where exactly would it come from? Is, you know, how much is business? How much is, is, is the learn side? I'd love to see that. Um, well, if it's, if the, if the, we're thinking about in reality that the... Business side already started recently, so you know they have still been establishing themselves in the market. Exactly, David. But so, so, so which is which is which is what the concern is, right? Because if the business side is new, unless they have deals. So, so for example, with JP, you were able to say a pipeline. We didn't necessarily see a pipeline for for business with that. We saw the B the the BCIC project that that they would have signed that that partnership with. That's twelve million. If 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 I'm not mistaken, 10, 10 to 12 million, right? Mm -hmm. If that yeah. is one of 10, that's 100 million. If they do what they did last year in terms of, let, let's say we, we if work they maintain with average revenue per user, mm -hmm. but if actually they are able to increase the rate per, average revenue per user, 
mm -hmm. uh, relative to, you know, uh, the total number of users. Uh, that's pretty good because, to be honest, I didn't get the chance to really sit down and compare what I call ratios in the periods because in my in my case, I'd have wanted to, you know, estimate the factor. So in 2020, you'd have an outsized figure there. And in 2021, you have a, a more normalized figure. But the thing is, I still, have, still want to appreciate that, that segment. You understand? Yeah, yeah. And and I see a comment in the chat about, you know, uh, by Jay Simpson about, you know, the prospects of the company. And one thing I like to point out is that, you know, you need to remember that we're talking about uh, parents, you know, preferring to have their kids uh, at uh, in, their, in their in their position rather than, you know, sending them to school. Because one thing to actually point out is that uh, uh, because of how COVID has been the world right now, parents can literally travel with their kids around the world. You know, uh, that's just the reality because you have remote work you now. I knew kids who were, you know, uh, traveling uh, with their parents and attending school, for example. Even Turk, I said, you know, she took her daughter to the UK when she was uh, doing her TED Talk. Yeah, but aren't, aren't, we, aren't we expecting things to go closer to normal as, as the year progresses? What, what would that mean for them, right? Because if you go back to school, would that mean more or less users for them? Well, you have a less first case scenario, which you know be a reduction. But the thing is, mm -hmm. we're talking about kids still wanting to use a difficult platform to repair themselves because you have to remember that we are facing two different extremes. One mm -hmm. extreme is learning loss that we can't quantify appropriately, or yeah. isn't truly being quantified because you have some kids who haven't been to school in the last two years. That's just a yeah. straight up facts. Yeah. So. You're going to have parents who, you know, who are willing to, or you have asked me, that friend I mentioned earlier, where people say, kids go to any focal and, you know, find somewhere to learn on the platform because the reality is it's an easier platform for them, you know, to understand and, and catch back up on. So that's one thing to contextualize. And you have the other extreme. Well, well which... does, that, does, does that really hold true, David? Because if that was true, wouldn't the numbers keep growing into 2021 and not have that major fall off? No, I remember 2021 schools didn't open back up until this, most schools open up back up until January of this year in 2022. So okay. 2021 yeah, so, would have been... So, so, so that's what I'm saying, right? So, um, I mean, okay, okay. So, so, so pretty much what I'm asking is, so the, the way the way that I'm seeing it, and I was hoping that since they gave us that that ARPU chart, which I, I think I'll just show it because that's that's kind of what we're talking about here. I was hoping that we'd be able to get a projection of that same ARPU for 2022 because that would give me an 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 idea as to where they see that revenue coming from. Right. I was, so, I was gonna point to Jay Simpson that you know, yeah, some parents want the kids to the house, but the reality is some parents, you know, do what's taken kind of extra expenses right now because what they paid any focal expenses is probably the gas bill right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, and, and you know, it's, as I say, the thing is we're entering, we're still entering an unknown time. So, mm -hmm. you know, there are things that will keep shoot any focal and benefit them because when you think about it, you're still talking about an environment, you know, where things are unknown. We're, Russia invaded Ukraine this week, and that, that's just one example. That they, they were in such an unknown time because COVID is taking a basket in all of this. <laughs> and, you know, so the thing is, although we're concerned about the school opening back up and everything else, mm -hmm. uh, it, the reality is PEP is still going to be a central focus for parents, you know, and the parents want to spend their money to get their kids into, you know, that benefit, you know, it works out. So when David. I say into unknown time, unknown tone, unknown time, David, I'm speaking about the fact that COVID is still taking the backseat right now. But the, what I'm speaking about is the, uh, the the world is just being the world. Like this decade has just been unpredictable in the last two years so far. All right. So so let me let let me let let me just bring context to what to what I was saying. Right. So we we have this this figure here. That's their average revenue per user, right? So we're talking about revenue, so that's why I think it makes sense for us to show this, right? Because this is this is what we're, if, if I use this number, their most recent AR 
PU, right? Which is average revenue per user, which 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 what I was hoping to see here is a breakdown because I am anticipating that this could potentially have some of the the edifocal business customers, right? So if 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 we're if if they're selling a business product at a higher price, and you average that, which 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 I'm I'm assuming in 2020 was mostly the learn students, then that average may be brought higher because if we have let's say 5,000 customers or 1,000 customers that we're selling a product for thirty thousand dollars per user, then the rest are are two thousand. Then that average is going to be higher, right? Does that make sense? So. Mm. Using their revenue figure and their last ARPU, that would mean that their the number of paid users using this amount would bring them to forty nine thousand six hundred and eighty three for twenty twenty two based based on their projection. Right. So I mean that would bring them actually to exceed their 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 twenty twenty number of users using this as as a figure being divided by their their projection of of 322 million so that's the part that i said i I wish i saw a breakdown of the projection itself because i would like to understand where where they see you know most of that business coming from that that that's that's a point i was making well the thing is that within with the the quote unquote look into the the north american market you're talking about uh the opportunities or inorganic growth in one sense. At the same time, mm-hmm. looking at you know setting up their own organic streams. Because you have two routes, you know, organic or inorganic. So that's probably where that, that growth in the in the projections are coming from. Because yeah. as persons rightfully said, uh they slow they couldn't go back person going back to school, the kids going back to school, you know, should in a normalized case you had the kind of number of paid users. Yeah. At the same yeah. time, any focal, you know. Considered that a, a constitution in the sense of Eddie Focal Academy, the first virtual academy for students in Jamaica, which is a historic thing. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So I get that, you know, David. So I mean, um, I'm not at this point. We 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 have to take the projection for what it is. I saw somebody saying saying earlier that it seems optimistic. We don't know, right? So I'm um, I'm trusting that. Usually, I mean, we don't. Because we don't have the history of seeing how well they do projections, we don't know if it's if if it's optimistic or conservative. We don't know, right? So if they they could project for three twenty two and and the four hundred. We don't know because again, we don't know where they're planning to get majority of that business from. So bringing that into context for this, I was just saying based on what how it looks like they're going to end. The, the 2021 year, I'm thinking that if if they do an average of let's say what this is about what um 36 million per per and 36 per million oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that, that per quarter sense. so if they do 36 and end up at about one 144 um so I mean yeah that's that that's kind of where I was going with that um what we see. For 2021, 20, they had a gross profit to, to, to revenue of 17% here. And I think their their projection, but no, I think I'm getting ahead of myself there. So, I mean, like, let me see what Kemele is saying here. Kemele is saying you can't determine a, mm. a, a projected ARPU since all revenues may not. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That, that's pretty much what I've been saying here. We don't know the makeup of that projected revenue. And that's the thing um, about it because, yeah. uh, so you know, we heard about the private investor briefing earlier today. You know, some of the things that were mentioned in the investor, private investor briefing, you know, clarify some of these things, you know, because if cause the thing is, when it comes down to recurring revenue streams, you know, there are, there are particular areas in the business side that they can benefit from from a, from a regular basis. You have anti money yeah. laundering training, you have corporate training, you know. You have many modalities, and the thing is, if you look at present a case scenario that's cheaper than the international product, then mm-hmm. it works out perfectly. Once they get the quality by the data, out the what they actually say, the HR team or you know the the head of the departments get what they want because you have companies that actually right here in Jamaica 
have their training for staff, but it's done on a international platform. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. So, so David, I mean, again, so, so the final thing I'll say about this, because I think we've kind of been been over it a couple of times, because we don't know. Um, so, if, I mean, Michael here is saying that a fall in users is a must. Um, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know that. So that that would be that would be speculation. We don't know, right? So, um, I would have loved to see. Um, I, I think by the time we see 2021, we'll have maybe more clarity about their model overall because usually in these situations, as the IPO is rolling out, more news will come out in the few months. I, I'm, I'm expecting to hear more about what, 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 their, what their expansion opportunities are. So, but I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah. I, I think know it's going to point out that uh, Jams uh, 1040 was asking about practice your business from business training. And so we're saying we don't know. We like, don't know. Because <laughs> uh, the thing is, if the division was probably established in 2020, we don't know when 2020. So you couldn't necessarily say in 2020, this is what we did. Because it probably could even be less than 1%, 5%, for example. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, man. And when it comes on to uh, 2021, we still don't know because the thing is, we saw the public article in the Gleaner about the BC, 10 million dollar BCSC contract with the yeah. National Transportation Agency. Uh, you know, so that these are things, and I think about it. The business has a lot of scale because there are sort of avenues that they can tap into. And the thing is, appearance one of the kids, the best for their kids. The business has scale, but the business costs would be higher. The business area is still unknown for them, still relatively new. So I mean I don't know. So if if you if you even look at their their existing development in terms of in terms of optimizing revenue, it may take them a few years to perfect that segment as well. But the truth is we just don't know, right? So I think I think we've kind of belabored that point. I think we can move on to to, to the rest of it. And I think um, and the, and the person and Crystal Pilot, you know about the more making confidence in using e learning. And when I, no, I think is people are taking it into the whole context of everyday and any focal no uh, so present you remember a lot of kids are still going to school you know any focal is a supplement or your supplement to your regular schooling that like, that is how i simplify it to be honest because everybody's like hey, back to school if you need to go back to school for one we don't have the current makeup of these classrooms and two at the same time you can't assume certain things because we are not aware of certain factors that are going on because although the government you know, cancelled part of the paper exam for the grade six students, mm -hmm. the thing is that you're still going to have parents you know, who want their kids to be up to scratch what's going on. So it's just really something that so I think other words, you know, users should fall and so forth and so on. It is still something that we cannot fully uh, put into depth. Just because of how the things are playing out, because people like you, people need to remember that uh, with extra classes, for example, is some supplemental you do to support your kids, and you know, in reality, yeah. So, so, so they, they have they 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 have the the core content. They have extra classes, um, yeah. So that that's let's take a couple of questions here, David. Um, sure. So. Um, Question is here, can can Edufocal manage to compete effectively in the US market? Again, we don't know. We haven't, we, I think that's that's something that's a part of their plans. To my knowledge, they have not started working with with, with those customers as yet. In terms of um, so so we don't know what courses they're targeting, what segment, we don't know if it if it's the same age group as what they're used to working with in in, in Jamaica. It, it may make sense maybe to even go to 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 Caribbean first, but I, I imagine they have they have particular products in mind that they would be positioning. Um, so I, I think I think that's just something that we can't really comment on. Really, we don't know. Uh, Tremaine is saying 
Could the increase in projected revenue be the partnership between Edifocal and Transport Ministry? Is that the same? Is that the same BCIC one that we mentioned? Because if that's yes, true, yes, but the thing is, I've mentioned that's earlier, just a million. That's, the value that's, was the value was quantified and made public. Yeah, that that can't cover the gap that we're seeing in in terms of the projections for me. So, BCIC pumps ten million dollars into road safety. Ten million, yeah. So that that can't be it. Um, how about strong strong competition? between Edifocal and evening and morning classes from private tutors. Well, the benefit they would have, you know, Edifocal is their ability to scale. So the, 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 the traditional private tutors are, or, or teachers, um, that model would not be as, as efficient and effective as Edifocal. So, um, with, 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 with increased ability to scale and expand they'll they'll be able to i think bridge that market i don't know in terms of price comparison which one would be more competitive but i i wouldn't necessarily consider it strong competition because i think if 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 i had to see them going up against those private persons they'd probably have an an advantage there um and, and i understand what we do have the thing is most of the companies that you could even consider are private. That's yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. All right, so Edifocal would still be relevant even with reduced usership. The parents would still keep sight. Um, I mean, that that depends, right? So we saw that that reduction in users. So, I mean, I think their person, I, I think overall what, what, what you'd see from from COVID is an increase in users. I think I think that's bound to happen, right? So persons would have used it, love it. Parents may say, "Okay, I prefer this. My child is home; they're safe. I don't have to worry about their safety in in a school." And I mean, the good thing is a high number of users would have converted, even from if you if you skip twenty twenty. And you saw the growth between 2019 and 2021. That's still a very good sign. So they're headed in the right direction where that is concerned in terms of number of users. Um, and that's why I'm not necessarily sure a further fall off would occur because I, I actually think that number of 16,000 will go up. Will it go up as far as the 49,000 to be able to get that, that, that projection based on the ARPU? I don't know. Right? Um, uh, Jermaine, yeah. I'm just going to share my screen right now. Uh, can you give me that chance? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Oh. Yeah. Is, it, is that a fair comparison, though, David? Can we compare? No, the reason, no, no, the reason why I'm highlighting something is just because. Not trying, you know, not trying to necessarily compare to that extent, you know, of this or that, you know. I'm trying to just give context of the fact that although you don't see, you know, a big spike in number of users uh, for, in this case, code for even Duolingo, at mm -hmm. the same time, these com they have different more companies to go and look at, check all these different companies, they are still growing. And the reality is, if once they focus finds the different niches that work perfectly for them, yeah, they're bingo because when one focuses on high school, it focuses on the lower segment of the population. In this case, primary and preparatory students, and and that's just it. You're gonna have that benefit of you know uh, scale at the same time have greater opportunity because most parents spend most of the money. I should say the most development money on kids, you know, in their in their formative years. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let us go back through the um. <laughs> Why? I didn't want yeah, to. David, to do, do, don't, don't say anything there. We'll, 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 I, I don't know if we'll get there. All right. So let's let's finish out with with the with the income statement here. So we saw um. We saw in terms of net profit, let's just start there. So they would have come out a negative in 2016 to, to that profit in 2020 now because it was such a major year for them. 
right? So you look at this year where they had 102 million in revenue, 10 million net profit, but 107 million in revenue for 2021, nine months, and they're actually at a loss. And that's because of that admin expense, right? So that and and that's why that figure is is concerning. Extra fifty million dollars. Extra fifty million dollars. Yeah. But the thing is, that wasn't annualized. At the same time, I was also going to point out the fact that uh, you know the finance costs would have gone up as well because, as you'd have seen, those different uh, financing options would have carried additional costs. Yeah, yeah, but you see, the concern there is so you look at the the gross profit percentage in 2020, it was 28 percent. It went down to 17 percent in 2021. So that I mean, the finance cost is definitely there, but that's five million as opposed to 15 million added to the admin expense for those nine months. Mm -hmm. So that 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 is concerning because we don't know if it's if it's if it's a cost of of getting the type of courses and content that they're trying to do on the business side. I'm assuming it's a business side that 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 they're developing that might lead to that increase. But it it's just I th I think their their projections for 2022 are based on this same 17 or 18 percent, which I guess would would be would be. Um, reasonable but i mean yeah just I see just a comment from raymond right there about the company that needs to go public and i was going to point out that uh for one they're going to listen to junior market so next five years no taxes yeah if they don't if that wasn't a big expense for them so that's one yeah, thing it's not it's not it's not at the same time we really don't know where this company can go because yeah. that that massive catapult they got in 2020 you know that especially when the pack focus on getting to BTB in the future, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, man. Because yeah, once man. they get once they get once they get the recurring revenue stream from you know, from BTB's uh operations, that's consistent cash flow that can you can rely on and the company can you know focus on other areas. Because the truth of the matter is every focus has the Caribbean to look at for another opportunity. And you know, they said North American markets which carry greater cost per cost and everything and but to make greater opportunity for revenue and so forth yeah so the thing is for example any folk sorry one-on-one -on -one, which focuses on high school like cape and csec they actually you know went work to the university of bahamas it's a proper online platform when covid kicked in so mm -hmm. i just go to show you that these companies are basically set up an industry right now and the thing is once it's appropriately capitalized on you don't know where it can go because true. If so, it, 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 it focus basically in Latin America. Oh, Timmy, how many conversation? Yeah. So, 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 David. So, so the concern here, and I mean, I, I definitely agree with you that there is great opportunity for them. I think, I think the picture that I want to paint for persons here, and just, just what, what we try to do for our our reviews. You just want to understand how the company makes money. So, I think we've kind of been through that. You have the right expectations for the performance of the company because that is important, you know, right? So we're not talking about those who think in in our culture and IPO does well if it goes over a certain percentage. So if if it lists does well in the short term, everybody's like IPO was a success. They I look at more the company's performance over time. Right. So so I mean, I think that's the point that I'm trying to focus here is understanding how the company has been performing try to see if 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 we can have the right expectations for how the company will grow because i think that's also important because we have to, to also treat the company for what it is right so those new markets that they're trying to form are new markets it will take some time sure they have the benefit of their experience growing in jamaica but let's just say it took them 10 years to get to this point. So we want to understand that as they are seeking to grow, it will take them some time to build up those things as well. So I think I think persons should understand what type of company they're investing in and understand that the opportunity is great. The risk is something that you want to be sure that you're comfortable with as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely 
happy to see I, I I look at really 2018 to 2019 that growth that that definitely show almost 200 percent growth in revenue before the pandemic definitely a good sign that means that they were already starting to figure things out and I think the pandemic would have caused them to even accelerate that process of figuring out how to scale how to meet increased demand how to form new new lines of revenue etc so I mean that's the part that that um I'm looking at right so Kyle is making a good point here their main um proposition is that gamification aspect education will be gamified worldwide in sh in in the short to long term period i agree there right so that is definitely something that they can look at and they have a platform that can go to different age groups right not just not just four to six in terms of grade but maybe high school maybe tertiary education as well there's a whole sector that they can expand to but and the reality that, is there there's no real competition for them in this and it's in jamaica but in the region so yeah yeah and, and the thing is you know as we increase the as the number of persons who have access to uh visa and debit and debit uh, credit options or you know even ncb link or cbdc comes in there are great is a great population part of the population in jamaica for example or even in the region that kind of access to pay for the products uh because you know that's a major issue in Jamaica right now. Persons, you know, having access to the relevant needs in terms of access to banking services like that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's Leon is saying they can offer degree programs in the future. That's the point, right? So they they have they have invested in building out that platform to be able to offer pretty much anything that they want. You just have to understand that it'll take them time to build the courses, build the content to add to that platform, right? So that's one of the the, one of that that's one of the expectations you should have and that is why i'm calling into into question that projection because what what that projection tells me for 2022 is that they would have had to be working on those things already because if they're going to work on them this year i'm not so, so so let's say take you three to six months to build a course once you build the course then you can market that course so if it is that they're building courses now to be able to get revenue from for 2022 when will that you know work out you understand what i mean so that's that's kind of the part i'm thinking about as well and the app oh so when i say about an app and to my manager don't think they have an app but at the same time <laughs> if you need to remember you have to have a specific number of users to you know make things like an app profitable because a lot of development costs are going to be an app but it's one for secure for kids, especially in this age, or any users altogether, and at mm. the same time stable, because a lot of back end work that persons don't appreciate when it comes to building apps. Not just uh, all right, give it a software coder and in two days our product. No, that's as simple. Yeah. All right, let's let's try and finish out the the um the cash flow statement here. So there there are three key areas that you look at for the cash flow statement. You look at cash flow from operating activities and um that's what we have here i didn't get to enter the numbers for 2021 we can just go to the uh, right place where we're finishing about yeah my yeah my, we will we will we'll we'll go right to it actually so uh, so after this we'll go straight to the the projections all right and would have seen seen cash flow from investing activities here as well um so they would have invested in the in the building out of their platform, their their software. Um, so that's where their investments would have gone for 2020. And then in terms of financing activities, they would have issued um, ordinary shares there. Shareholders loan proceeds from the short-term loans would have provided cash from financing activities. And so what we saw at the end of 2020 I believe was positive cash. And if you look at operating cash flow from 2016, come all the way down, um, 2020 would have been the lowest. I didn't get to do the one for 2021, but I'm interested in seeing that as well. Uh, but it's definitely a ways from where they were a couple of years ago in terms of cash flow. Um, but, you know, just looking at the four years here, they were 
they were headed in the right direction in terms of putting things in place to ensure they have cash, right? Because you need cash to meet short-term obligations, pay staff, etc. Uh, Jimmy, um, I, saw, I saw a comment a while ago about, you know, Simon Uta about the government, you know, in 2020. And I was going to point out that uh, that was 2020. It's 2021, they have less users, but they've made up uh, the similar amount of revenue or actually, it's actually, actually higher revenue. So, and they, they mentioned it in the, even in the receivables in the prospectus that is it uh, the government of Jamaica or the key private sector partners. So, to be honest, 2020, they got a good, uh, based on what we see, you know, that benefit from the government but at the same time. And they actually, so there's agreements in the prospectus and you know, the amount of money they've collected. But the reality mm -hmm. is, it is the money they got and it's the money they put to good use. Yeah, I mean, so so even if the government was the main reason for that introduction of new business by, you know, partnering with them to say, okay, do the classes here. Remember, after that point, or let's say that was an arrangement for three months, six months, et cetera, they now have that customer. They can, they can, that customer now have the option to continue with them. So if you, if you look at that ARPU from 2019, it would have still grown from from almost eight thousand to sixteen thousand because even after that initial these cost of their their customer base would have still still doubled in terms of paying customers right so it's still headed in the right direction so even if you want to count 2020 as 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 an as an anomaly they're still headed in the right direction in 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 terms of users right and, and the thing is I'm gonna point out that they actually included in the PHMT tool the different agreements that I've made. So you know, they pointed out the fact that uh, the Ministry of Education contracted them to provide access to a platform for a total of 5,000 grade 46 students. And they pointed out the argument has fully been fully performed. And the thing is, any focal is quote unquote the, the preferred choice uh, for the government at this point. You cannot ignore that. I think it's just business that they can get if the ministry you know, wants to for example, work on getting students back into the frame of things. Yeah, yeah. This is this is what you were referring to. Yes, that was referring to. Yeah. So this is this says total of five thousand, right? And this agreement would have been for for twenty twenty one. So that would show on the on on the financials that would have seen for twenty twenty one. September. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna, and, and, and as Christopher really points out, you know, uh, they have, the opportunities that they have, which I haven't realized as yet, are very numerous. Because the thing is, a business like that would have focused on primarily serving what was needed. Our the yeah. education division and so on, the primary focus is providing a stable platform for the kids and adding content and, you know, they can't never spend that, that main income bread and butter. And if I mean education is so comfortable with any focal, you know, because who did it go to when Puko it started? It was Eddie Focal, because there's nobody else that yeah. could have gone to say, hey, provide a platform or whatever for kids. So although there are concerns, parents having you know about back to school and so on and so forth, the reality is the business has a lot of, of potential and skill. We haven't yeah, yeah, seen yeah, it man. coming as yet, but at the same time, you cannot ignore the reality because if anybody was surprised that their own projections, even in 2022, first are going to be like, should I have joined this company? Yeah, no, no, uh, uh, that is just it. You, well, there's a lot of things that we cannot uh, truly project, and I'm really and truly. Yeah. All right. So let us finish out here. I think we're looking at cash flow. Well, it's again 2021 to the September. projections. Yeah, man. It, we're gonna go straight to the projections now. Well, we're gonna look at the 2021 nine months first and then is this page 66 am i on the right page oh 66? sorry no no sorry that's that i was i was looking for i was on the right page sir sorry is that error <laughs> <laughs> production is on page 62 61 to 65. okay yeah yeah because we spoke about that already projections yes so so this is definitely an area that um, so I'm not going to look at projected assets. If you guys don't mind, I'm going straight to, straight to, um, 
sales, right? Because I think that's the only one we need to really focus on at this point. All right, so let's start with 2022. So this is this is your your projection. So as I said, that 107 million for nine months in 2021 to 322 million for this year that we've already started, that we're in, we're about to enter the third month. Um, so their total income would total revenue, 323 million. This is a breakdown of their their projected expenses. And I really like the fact that they showed the breakdown here instead of just showing admin and 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 that general category that they had before. So if you notice the staff cost is 128 million. Contract cost, content development, those are the, the, the major ones. Subscription here being 10. I'm not sure what 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 is that what is that subscription cost? I don't know if they have to pay for a subscription to maintain their platform. I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking for that. Where, where is it again? Can I, can I put the curse over it? Oh, subscription. Oh, yeah, so remember yeah. that Eddie Focal, you know, would probably have subscription costs to, uh, for example, Amazon Web Services or, you know, other provide support. Yeah, yeah, providers. yeah. I'm thinking I, I, that's what I was wondering if it's like cloud based services that for, for hosting on their platform, etc. Um, advertising and promotion, which I believe would have gone down from previous years. Um, so in terms of what, what they're saying here is that to make 323 million, they have to spend 257. So this is, this, this is their, their expected expenses. And for persons asking if it's too much for them to be spending so much on, on staff costs, you need to remember we cannot discount to the reality of paying your staff properly and having a motivated team because yeah, every it's also it's it's interesting, right? Everybody wants to be paid well, but when when you're the investor looking at the financials, you want staff costs to be low. You can't have it both ways, right? So, persons being paid well is not is is is, is never an issue for me. You, you you just want to be sure that you have the right people that you're paying the right people who who can produce the results that that you're expecting. All right. And I was actually going to point out that you know. In that projection, go back to the projection and go back to the total assets. That's a previous page. Yeah, so you realize they have 240 million dollars in total assets right there, right? So when I look back at the prospectus and look at September, total assets was 182 million dollars. We're looking through is 130 million, and that would include 40, 42 or 44 million. 44 million being paid out as uh, as uh, paying back charge and debt. So what I was actually going to point out was that uh, company basically, so 129 minus 12 minus uh, contraction costs, I can subtract 44. I sent you million dollars, but it's still going to go to 84 cars back bottom line. So, you know, in essence, the app is successful. They, surpass this entire project and total assets. Yeah. So you see, I pointed that out because they couldn't have said IPO money going to really bring this up any higher because you don't know what could have happened. Yeah. And I think before we close, oh, persons are saying, go back up earlier to the question, the statement about, you know, persons on being unable to subscribe to the IPO. I just want to address that quickly. It was the question at uh, you remember who asked it? Dwayne O'Neill, 7 or 3 p.m. Top of the comments. Ah, 7 or 3 p.m. That was a long time ago, man. Just go look my head at it. Hold on. I'm not seeing it. Just just read it out. So the person basically said uh doing a need in this case uh how do we buy this ipo is it only through mil can we buy it through ncb as well so i believe we can go to the other pages or the prospectus on the subscription can you go to, can you go there find maestro that would have been right, which page, page? Tell me 76, the page. 76 77 actually 77 77 
So for those wondering right here, a one Mebra can basically obviously be able to apply through their company's own platform or the broker's own platform. And with respect to broker's electronic platform, uh, Jimmy B is already allowing persons to buy any focal right there right now. And uh, there should be some other brokers being added shortly. I can't say who, but uh, it should be seen some other brokers being added shortly. So it's not only through Mayberry and Jamie B can buy the IPO. However, uh, not, not there, Jeremy, on uh, the other side. Other page? You're right. Yeah, other page. No, it's, it's, one, it's one for the non Mayberry clients. Yeah, yeah over there. Option three. So. I just mentioned on the fact that persons are seeing how they can subscribe or whatever. So it, for one, and this is just free, disc, free disclaimer, uh, you can actually open an account to Mayberry if you can present the moment the right of assets and so on. Uh, then even the minimum amount to open your account with for the IPO, but at the same time, uh, it's not only restricted to Mayberry and JMB. As I said, uh, we do know what's going on in the background, but at the same time, it wouldn't be something that is blocked to the public in that sense. So the real truth of the matter is that you know, we have to just wait until, so as I said, the extra day, so it opens on Thursday. Hopefully, maybe it doesn't close the same day as it opens. Probably get a little more time for to subscribe. But there are other problems well, that should be I coming mean, up shortly. Yeah, so, 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 so Moneyline is an option, as you mentioned, or because if you don't have a Mayberry account, you can open the account with the IPO. Yeah, so but that, that, saying that, that you don't necessarily option. have to. Even your prices mentioned, and I'm saying that Leon, I, I said, so here's the context. For a broker to actually sell an offer on their platform, unlike in the past where you're paying pay and paper, they have to sign a selling agent agreement. So we don't know what stage those agreements are at right now. So for those on your other electronic platforms, as we're discussing this, so NC's Go IPO was the first virtual platform. Then you had Proven's IPO Pro. Then you had Barita Boss. After Barita Boss, you had Sajikor's e Invest. Then you have VMware's IPO Edge. And you have Jay Monland, which has always been in the background forever. So those are different virtual platforms that are already there. And you know, for those brokers with the validation platforms, the information sent to the broker shortly. But I was just pointing out that, you know, don't expect that the IPO is going to be closed. And, you know, it was only through JMB or maybe a client that, you know, Persons could have applied through, so uh, don't don't worry. To be honest, but as I said, you know, if you probably get an email shortly from your advisor or your broker, you can follow up on Monday or Tuesday. But as I said, but people can see those agreements are signed because, as I said, in the virtual space versus the actual pen and paper way, it's two different scenarios. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what I'll do here, um, we've gone about ninety minutes in. So what I'll do, David, is just go through. I'm gonna go through the dividend mandate. Or Sorry, the Gary. Dividend Sorry, and Gary. I didn't realize I was speaking so fast. I was saying that just wait until Monday or Tuesday to see which other platforms are brought on stream. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go through the dividend policy. Um, we already covered how to apply, so that's good. That was coming up, and then we. I, I wanted to kind of go through the 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 MDNA the notes because I don't. I don't want to miss their commentary on both the the historical numbers and the and the the future outlook that they have for the company. And I think we can close out there. So we can close out in about 30 minutes. All right. So I want to thank everybody that's been here with us. Really appreciate it on a Friday night. Please do like the video. It definitely helps us out. If it's your first time here, we have a Telegram group that you can join with. We talk about this kind of stuff every day. So feel free to join us on Telegram. The link is in the description for this video. All right. So um, let me go back to my screen here. So this is their dividend policy. It says, based on the expectation of the company, um, has adopted a dividend policy targeting a payout not exceeding 25% of net profits after tax. Company's dividend policy is subject to the company's reinvestment needs, including investment in its platform and the, the availability of sufficient distributable reserves for each financial year. So we would have seen, we didn't see any, any reserves going up to 2020, I believe. 
So really it is dependent on the year 2022 going into 2023 that you would be able to get a dividend if any. So just bear that in mind. They have not paid, um, at, at, at this point I wouldn't, let's see how their financial year goes and then you'll see whether or not there's a likelihood of dividend or not. Let's, let's just put it that way. All right. Let's go through, and this is just the makeup of the company. I'll skip these. You can read the that board. to your convenience. Yeah. All right. So let's get down to the MDNA now. We definitely want to go through this. So if it's your first time reading a, a prospectus, the, the, the management discussion and analysis gives you a management perspective on the performance of the company, what they're planning and the outlook for the company. So it's one of the areas that we recommend you read in every prospectus. You want to see that and the quarterlies as well. All right. All right. So I'll skip over the, the details about the company. Um, I, I don't I don't think that's necessary for what we're doing here. Um, our people, our platform, that is on their website as well. Feel free to check that out. So let's look at Edifocal Learn and Edifocal Business, right? So it says Edifocal Learn focuses on, on creating educational content for exit milestone exams with content being distributed through their proprietary e-learning platform, which they've been you know, building on and working on for the past 10 years. They currently focus on PEP exams, previously known as GSAT. As we said, there is opportunities to go outside of that, but that's what they currently do. And I think finally for that, for the learn, they introduce gamification with, with the general characteristics of individual subjects that you know enhances the learning process, right? Edifocal Business, which is the newer division, it focuses on creating e-learning content and leveraging their their learning management solution in both public and private sector organizations. So we do know they're, they're forming these partnerships already. I highlighted this here that they mentioned in 2020, um, educational technology companies receive more than 2.2 billion in, in investments. By 2025, they're projecting the e-learning market to grow by 200 and by three 325 billion US in value, most of which is expected to come from developing countries. And it says that they're well positioned to benefit from that growth. That's that's what they're saying here. Um, in terms of them representing a business with untapped potential, I think I think we all agree that there, there is potential there. They have developed and continue to build out their web web platform already a key player. These are things we already know, right? In terms of their innovative approach and the segments that they've been able to build out. So I think I, I would have highlighted this. Usually for those who know me from, from these reviews, I highlight things in red that concern me or is something that I want to go back and check at a later date and green will typically be something that I consider positive. So it says the global pandemic has undoubtedly propelled digital education a step forward. I would have seen that for them in 2020. So they saw a significant increase by 519% in 2020. While 2020 was an extraordinary year with new user growth being driven by the shock of the pandemic, the user base of 2021 would have been a 109% increase over 2019. And we looked at this, right? So you guys would have seen this. We looked at this table in depth. I would love to see that this table was broken down for 2022 as well. I think it would help me understand how much they expect their customer base to grow. But what I did, as I said, when I took that 322 million projection in terms of revenue by this most recent ARPU that brought them to 49,000 users. So they're, they're expecting to grow 300% in terms of users for 2022. All right. That's what the, you know, going off the data that we have. Um, OK, 
Okay, so this is would be the analysis of their five-year performance. So one of the things that you should note, the fact that they're going to be listed on the junior market, they'll get a benefit in terms of taxation. So that is something to look forward to. They'll, they'll be able to pay less in, in taxes, which will improve their profitability. And I believe that goes up to 15 years, David, if, for them to... to um, the window that they would have to maintain the requirements, yeah. All right, and this would be the statements. We won't go into that. We did that already. This is the revenue, the, the revenue analysis. Let me focus here on the expense one that we're seeing here. All right, so Company saw a proportional increase in expenses over the five-year period from 7.5 million in 2016 to 74 million in the financial year for 2020. I think these we would have looked at. I want to go to things that we have not addressed already. These are the, the these are the charts that we started to look at, but we didn't. Um, okay, I thought that this part was interesting to show here. So it mentions here that the, the profile of their growth is not dissimilar from other early stage technology companies and should be viewed within this context, largely due to R&D costs, high levels of tech related reinvestment and the acquisition costs of any new customers for a novel technology solution. Now, I, I saw this and I agreed with it and I also factored that into that new that those those expansion plans right because if if they're pretty much saying here yes there is a cost for r d there is a cost to to develop and build out the, the the content and courses that they're doing and there would there will be a new cost there will be a cost for acquiring new business again i'm just looking at what 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 those those projections for 2022 would show all right then, then, then they show profit and loss. It spoke about the, the receivables growth here. Would have looked at that already. Um, I'm just kind of scanning through here, David. That's why I'm not. No, no, don't worry, man. Don't worry. Don't worry. Most of already. And then this would be the the um the financials for the nine months, 2021. So you want to go through this. I I, I love the fact that they had the breakdown here. Um. All right, let's see. Balance sheet analysis. Um, trying to see if there's anything worth pointing out here. I want to look for future outlook and their commentary on, on the projections, right? So two-year forecast. Okay, all right, so let's, let's zone in on this here. All right, so it says um, it's targeted growth strategies for the next two years through 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 strategic um, partnerships and collaborations, these projections leverage the experience of the existing management and expertise from its board of directors to continue building out a solid base on which Edifocal has been established. The following assumptions were made considering in developing the, the projections. So they're saying that no additional ordinary shares will be issued during that two-year period they are projecting single digit increases in inflation david where are we in in terms of inflation 9.7 percent at point to point inflation up to january 2020. okay all right so bear that in mind right periodic salary increase is proportionate to cost of living so this is the staff cost that i think um was it LMD and STEM Academy was speaking about earlier. Um, periodic increases in administrative expenses proportionate to the anticipated increase rate of inflation. Now, again, as I said, as 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 employees, we like to see companies willing to pay well and pay consistently. That's what they're saying here. It's something that um, I think. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm not going to argue with, but it's something that you want to kind of monitor to see how, how it grows, right? The, the anticipation of 100% corporate tax reduction, which they do have access to, 
Lease rental charges remaining the same. No significant changes in the operating environment that may affect the operations of the company. So those, those are their assumptions going into the projections, right? And what they're saying is their net profit here is expected to increase by a compound annual growth rate of 32%, moving from 13 million in 2021 to um, 69.4 million. Now, did they actually show this, this, this 13 million for, for, for 2021, that net profit? That's not for the nine months. Did it did it show that in the nine months? 13.1 or or this is the end of the year. Are we are we to assume that that's gonna be the profit for the end of the year? That's what I'm assuming. That's what I'm assuming as well. So even though they would have shown a loss for the nine months, what they're saying here is that net profit for 2021 was this. Right? So bear that in mind, that gives some context to the eight to the nine months that we would have seen, right? So what they're saying is they made a, a net profit of this. It's not negative, um, which which kind of gives you um, some some insight, right? So that's interesting to me there, and and they're they're projecting that that would be sixty nine point four million by twenty twenty three. Um, let's see here. Do I have anything over that side? Okay, yes, I did have some things here. Um, let me scroll through here, streamlining current operations. Okay. So I had this highlighted here, the growth in the receivables over the forecast period is primarily driven by growth in sales and it, and it represents a collection period of 60 days. So this is, this is what I saw and they, they expect to expand aggressively the number of public sector clients or so government customers they serve and, and Pretty much what they're saying is because they work with government customers, they're trying to, they're aiming for 60, but they're they're gonna try and keep it under 90 days. All right, so bear that in mind. So for those who are concerned about the makeup of the projected revenue, it says here that they're expecting to grow that, that business. All right. Um, let's see what else here. Those are pretty much most of the notes. So the growth in intangibles, no, I don't think I need to mention that here. All right, I would have shown the financials already. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, I would I'd recommend that you go through the notes. It would have spoken about, you know, their 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 makeup. It adds some more details to what we would have seen in the statements. So it is worth the read. I'm just not gonna go through it here because of the time. We're, we're trying to keep this under two hours now. So just go through it, you'll understand the context as to how they've been able to make it through the previous years, through different types of financing. Um, you want to look at the risk that they, that they mentioned. David and I would have spoken about some of these earlier. Um, so just be sure to go through that. Okay. All right. So David, I mean, in terms of everything that we've looked at, what are you seeing in terms of where you expect, or, or what are your thoughts overall on on any focal to this point? Well, right now, you know, just like similar to JFP, in a sense, persons are concerned on the company's growth and viability. But at least on the flip side, though, any focal as a market that you know you at least can see every day, <laughs> because of a person's go see the KFCs and go see the furniture. And they're like, so where the revenue coming from? Like, yeah, that's that. Yeah. And because like, hey, a new chance born every day to KPH. So, <laughs> you know, but but to be honest, I'm looking forward to what they will do. I expect they will able to also subscribe. I'm not sure, if, and I wouldn't be surprised if Mayberry has a sign outside saying IPO close at nine o'clock. Uh, <laughs> go back to no, no. If you remember Lumber Depot's IPO, that's what actually happened. Maybe that sign outside that says. Please turn back. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, I think about Mayberry's clientele in general. Eighty million is not a lot. Meaning, I mean, that's yeah. I, I really that is a little bit of a new Porsche money, to be honest. Because eighty million dollars, that's two new Porsches and a couple of G wagons. So, yeah. 
So in terms of one of the things we spoke about in a group is the potential allocation, right? So what can, what do you think persons can expect there based on the size of the offer? Well, to be honest, <laughs> if it's anything like a main event, just expect to get a couple, a couple thousand shares and a nice pro rata probably less than 10%, probably less than 5% if I'm being, if I'm being kind. Yeah. So... What that means, essentially, if you're looking to get a sizable amount of shares in a company based on the size of the offer, you'll have to buy it after it's listed. So just bear that in mind. So that one dollar. Hopefully, the price, circuit breaker doesn't make your life hell, though. Well, but David, you already know for the first day or two, that's gonna be circuit breaker. I mean, I, I think I think that's kind of a known thing now with IPOs. Um, so just bear that in mind. But just just anticipate that to get sizable volume you may have to buy it at a price higher than a dollar i just wanted to kind of set that that i think that i mean we don't know the future but i think it's reasonable to to anticipate that um just based on the size of the offer and what we've seen uh the next thing i wanted to to kind of talk about here so we do see their their projections at i think as we go throughout the year I'm anticipating more things to be revealed, more things to be made known in terms of partnerships, et cetera. So we'll see some more context to the projections. Um, we saw the document saying that it would have made a net profit for 2021. So that's good. That means that final quarter would have been an excellent one um, because they were at a loss for nine months. So they would have gained almost 15 million profit to to overcome that loss in in the last last three quarters quarter. no last quarter I mean. yeah yeah my name my name and sorry last quarter so that's good and if that's the case with which it looks like it's gonna set the stage for 2022 so i guess maybe then that that projection would have you know taken that last quarter in mind um so yeah so um anything else you wanted to add here david let's go through some some questions here no i'll just go to the questions with you okay so in terms of circuit breaker for J jfp i don't know um circuit breaker goes both ways <laughs> but i don't know i don't know i'm kidding um jfp it's i don't know i don't know we'll, we'll just have to see um yeah, we'll just have to see. I, I don't think you should have the, the circuit breaker as a benchmark. It's not automatic. Um, yes, yes, Smith, it could be up or down, as, as I was joking there. But um, circuit breaker is not the only measurement for success, okay? Um, just bear that in mind. JFP, I think the allocations should be announced soon because it's almost six days after closing. So look out for that. So as soon as those are announced, we'll do a video to, to cover it. Um, try and, I, man, um, you need to give JFP a break, man. So Kyle is saying uh, what they should do is to, to leverage what they already do well. They should implement gamification as a service where they can charge an educational institution. So one of the things I saw in their outlook, they're planning to offer other services. I think I saw um, financial literacy as one of the things they're planning to offer. Um, financial literacy through gamification would be an, an excellent idea. Um, and I imagine that they have the, the platform to offer other services, other courses, other content, et cetera. All right, so that, that does make sense. Um, Let's see, but I've covered most of those. So as I said, STEM, STEM Academy was saying that, um, was his concern about the staff costs? I mean, we, I don't know, I'm, I'm not one to speak on that. I think, I think if persons are producing, you want to pay them well. I and think we, and to be honest, I don't think we should go back to this mentality in Jamaica of, we will pay our staff less just because we're trying to cut back expenses because the reality is if your staff are underpaid and stressing about regular life and under motivated which is a startup it's going to make it for one harder to retain to retain talent at the same time yeah. even well, like attract well, it i think i think it's just the idea as i said the, the, the hat of an investor 
says, I want to watch costs, right? right? I want to keep costs low so that profitability, the more profitable the company, the better it will perform on the market. So I think that's the lens through which she, she's, she's looking at, well, he or she is, is, is looking at it. Um, I think Imran is saying, I think they should have waited until they had solid profitability. I, I don't necessarily agree here. Um, I think they're positioned well. And the truth is, when you have a company like this, that there is great potential and great risk, I think it provides great opportunity for those who can see where the company is headed. Because if it was an obvious winner, then it may not make the, the best type of investment for everyone, right? So for those who can see, so for those who would have invested in the company early would have seen something that, that maybe others have not seen yet. And the fact that a lot of, the fact that Roots Financial, for example, was willing to convert to equity shows what they see for the company because you wouldn't take equity in a company like that if, if you don't think they'd be able to, you know, give you a good return on that, on that investment. So that's, that's my take on that. Um, so Raymond was saying, David, that, um, I think this company will do well using prior proper funding channels, namely series ABC funding prior to going public. Um, I mean, they're at a the point of going public now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think Christoph is saying that they, they will need help of the Ministry of Education and, and they have good relationships with the Ministry of Education. So that that's what we're saying that I think that partnership is strong. I think that partnership is what would have brought them to that point and will continue to to get stronger um let me see if there's anything else do do we think the company's staff cost is too large for its size i don't know because you you have 50 employees 128 million i'm not going to assume that it's equal pay across i don't know that's kind of hard to comment on Yes, it's a very, yes, it's a very difficult, it's a very difficult, it's a very difficult space. Yeah, financial literacy through gamification would be a game changer. That is true. That is definitely true. Um, Imran is saying for them to grow locally, access to internet has to improve. That is true. That is true. But it's something that look at. I think there was something on Kalila's channel where there's another player trying to come into the internet space. I think five, ten years from now, the internet penetration will be better than it is now. Which Rock Mobile, well. Rock Mobile, yeah. that's the name of the company. Yeah, man. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lo Lowlin, I think I'm pronouncing that right. We do need a way to draw people towards financial education. That is true. Agreed. That is true. So, so gamification might be it, and especially if you target younger persons i think that would be definitely a good thing um so we definitely be bullish on that um sean you missed a lot but you can watch the replay you can watch the replay um okay i think that's it yeah so overall i mean as i said speak to your financial advisor before you decide on this ipo i think we've gone through a fair amount to help you to make an informed decision um yeah yeah so that that is it so we will have a special session all right let me see one last comment here the company clearly is not ready for market with such high operating costs smells like a cash grab in my opinion what do you mean what do you mean they're clearly not ready and what would what would make a company ready for for the market in that regard I'd, I'd be interested to seeing what you mean there um in 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 terms of the last part uh, a cash grab I'll, I'll reserve my thoughts on that one um <laughs> no <laughs> oh, 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 oh that oh that they're talking about no anything is it I, to be honest, I don't think it's best for everybody to be uh, 
seeing, you know, expectations should be less. The stock should be less. Like, to be honest, we need to kind of, you know, move away from just saying, hey, staff expense is, is expensive. They should be better. Like, I understand the concern of many persons when it comes down to the companies high quote unquote administrative cost to staff. But the reality is, if you're building a solid company, it's either you're going to take two years with 50 staff, yeah. or you're going to take five years with 25 members of staff. Yeah. So, I mean, as I said, I think if persons are executing and adding to the bottom line, pay them what they're worth. So I don't know what was negotiated. That's that. That's not our place to. And I think if they're if they're growing in profitability, the money that they're paying to drive that growth. No, I guess the argument is keeping the costs down for 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 a company that's considered a startup will help with their profitability. That would be a good point. But as I said, I mean, their growth to this point is still attributable to the same persons that they're paying. So, I mean, I don't know. And there's a there's a portion as well that you have to, I mean, it, yeah, let me, let me, let, let me, let me stop it there. All right. And, so this and, and is where we're getting closer I mean, to greater and greater internet connectivity. I was going to say, I'm going to say, Jeremy, that we need, the reality is, inflation is going up right now. That's one thing. And people are saying, yo, increase your pay. Yeah. But as an investor, we're like, you increase it. But yeah, then that's that that's that's the point I was making. So so the so so the investor in us may be saying, you know, staff cost is too high, but the employee in us would say, you know, make sure they're not underpaid. So we have to kind of look at that in, in the right context, I think. Yeah, because and, and she honest, said it right. Good it, good it person. Make sense for it doesn't make sense to be talking about you should undercut staff or so on or so forth because the reality is it goes back to bite you. Because yeah, yeah. the thing is, you had companies pre COVID which had a lot more staff, a lot more expenses, and were less efficient. And now when COVID came around, you had less staff members and the companies being less, but as growing profitability. For example, this is CPJ. Yeah. CPJ had 450 members of staff, was making losses in the best tourism years. Have 100 left staff members, and they are the best profitability ever. Yeah. So, so as, as an example, that as I say, you know, we should pay, we spend less and so on. So let's get it in context. A, a, a CPJ is taking me about $600,000 extra per month in, in extra cost, and a lot of that went attributable to staff members, and that's, you know, US dollars, not JMD. So you're talking about 600000 USD per month times 12 times 157. I don't know what doesn't make why it doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah, I forgot Jamaican dollar is appreciated. <laughs> I, was, I, no, like, I, I was in my character and I was like, wait, why does this number seem so large? I was like, oh my god, I forgot dollar is appreciated. And that's also something to consider because one of the things they showed in their in 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 their assumptions. So I remember they spoke about this, you know, that they they're they're factoring in annual increase, they're factoring in the rate of inflation, which as I said, again, if you work for the company, that's a good thing. So, um, yeah. All right, guys. So I think we've covered everything here. Thank you, David, for joining me as usual. Guys, please like the video if you found value in it. Share our channel with others. It really does help us grow. And we will have a session tomorrow with David Mullings on Building Wealth. Be sure to check out that one. Join us on Telegram. The conversation is is constant it's daily and you are able to learn a lot get your daily questions answered ask anything that you wish the only thing that we don't do in telegram is give you financial advice because we can't but um i think it's really been valuable david shares daily and you know everybody just shares openly to help help each person get better as an investor so thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video